hi welcome to my video and in this video I would like to explain to you how I usually take photos of the International Space Station it's not rocket science uh, anybody can do it you don't need any fancy stuff any specialized stuff this uh, very telescope is a 10 inch sky watcher Dobsonian it's a flex tube so you can basically expand this bit and collapse it once you don't use it so it's easy to carry around very simple build what you can do is you can use it and basically move it the way the ISS is moving so it's a very 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 good equipment so you can see it's a real tube there are mirrors inside there is one secondary mirror at the bottom and there is a primary sorry a primary mirror in the bottom and the secondary just right here and that projects the view just out there and on this one you can see a tail rod but I will explain to you exactly what a tail rod is and why is it so good I will do a close-up about it in a second so I show you now what I'm using for imaging which is basically this is just a reducer, it's just reducing the 2 inch size um, this is where you put the eyepiece where you just look, but if you don't look instead of imaging, then I need to use this because my power mate, the Teleview 2.5 times power mate which is basically um, increasing my focal length 2.5 times of the basic standard scope size which is uh, 1200 millimeters so meter 0.2 um, basically the focal length so I'm gonna with this I can get three meters of focal length which is a lot so you need quite a lot of accuracy for that if you really want to do uh, proper imaging so reducer to a one and a quarter inch then I have the teleview power mate and I have a ASI 224 color camera but I'm also using an ASI 120mm which is a monochrome camera I'll be honest I have more success so far with the mono camera because the sensitivity is just better but I just bought this camera so I've only tested on an ISS which only the elevation was 41 degrees so it's not really tested properly yet but it's coming soon so once I do this obviously there's a cable here I attach it to the laptop and what I'm doing basically is once I align the tail rod with the scope so what I'm seeing when I see let's say a star in the middle of the tail rod then it should be exactly where the tube is pointing so on the laptop I should see that star right in the middle of my screen so I need to play around as long as I get this basically this this accuracy so what is a tail rod so this little piece here is a tail rod so basically you just mount it on the top of the scope like so and what it does, it, re it is replacing my finder scope. But what's the trick? The trick is, you should be able to see now concentric red circles. I can adjust how strong these lights should be. It's daytime, so it's a bit difficult now. But at night time, I should reduce it completely. So there's a little where to turn it on anyway so that light source is projected onto a plate basically if I move the scope a bit then you should be able to see exactly the same concentric circles just right there and if I move the scope it is moving with it it's a bit like a finder scope but there is no magnification whatsoever but instead it's a very steady source and 
it's easier to keep basically ISS just right in the middle of that circle the, the tiniest circle so what exactly happening when I'm doing the ISIS imaging once everything is aligned then basically I just loosen up the two um, this piece on the side of the scope and when action time comes I'm just basically standing behind it looking through the tail rod and then just simply following it you know so if it comes from that side sorry I have a little room in my balcony <laughs> I'm still struggling so I keep looking and once I did the setup I'm just keep moving the scope like this and hope and I'm and I'm just hoping that I get the right results um, you need to find out first exactly how how you need to do the setup on your on your laptop basically because that's crucial expo time gain I use fire capture for this for these cameras and uh, yeah it's absolutely feasible um, take a look at I'm gonna show you now a few pictures how I'm, how, um, what I got so far pretty good results um, I'm, I'm kind of proud of it because it's all manually tracked and and it's 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 really hard if you've ever if you have ever tried it even with with a handheld camera you know exactly that it's very very difficult so I will encourage anybody to, to go and try it I have done this with Maxutov scopes um, Newtonians on equatorial mounts you, you can really try with all kind of equipment it, it really doesn't matter as long as you sort of nail the right um, settings then I think you should be able to to capture a lot of good stuff to be fair so yeah take a look at a few photos now I'd like to show you the basic principle that how it is exactly done with first with an airplane this is a Boeing Dreamlifter uh, and without the power mate basically you can see uh, as I try to track it it goes up and down here and there on the screen so let's see what's happening if I use the power mate and I try to do the ISS this is a real footage I took um, a few months ago and you can see it zigzagging all around the screen as I try to follow its motion in the sky manually with my scope. It's not an easy task but the, the rewarding bit is when I can keep it still. Uh, here is some slow-mo uh, at one quarter of the speed and yeah and you can see that it's, it's feasible and I'm looking for a good frames basically.